What do you think the USA will be most known for 100 years from now? Story 1. For once being a democracy, sadly, its unabated worship of a free market will just encourage corporations to buy politicians, and most future litigation will help big businesses, not the average citizen. Story 2. Hamburgers. Already a stereotypical American food item, beef from cows will likely be so sparse a hundred years from now that they will be wondering how we ever thought it was sustainable to eat beef all the time. Story 3. It's funny how people don't seem to be aware of the fact that the U.S. has been the dominant cultural force in the world for the past 100 years. It's like people actually think the only thing the U.S. has done is war. Ignore all the genres of music from here or the entertainment industry, they definitely aren't noteworthy. Story 4. Nothing of which we can fathom. In 100 years, events will have happened that we could not have predicted, things of which we probably didn't conceive. Life will be greatly altered to our scope of understanding and technology will be much broader. To have a thought experiment of future perception would require a mind that doesn't have cynicism or too much optimism. We lack the ability to draw a conclusion without bias. Our minds are weak to our individual's wants and irritations. Life in the future will have problems that manifested without our ability to foresee. I expect life to be troubled. We have issues of today that without intervention could be globally destabilizing. Climate change will likely cause massive water and food insecurities. Weather phenomena will likely cause damages in the trillions of dollars. Life will likely be very harsh for a majority of the world. The United States is resource-rich and militarily strong. It's likely to still be around if greater society holds. Though everything could end and nothing remembered if a large meteor stuck the earth, or a disease we couldn't stop, or a fungi zombie-induced pandemic, or alien invasion. Something we predicted in movies and we didn't have the foresight to realize was prophetic. Story 5. Re-establishment of general slavery. Through the idea that if you pay a criminal's fines and do damages, you gain ownership of said criminal until they pay you back with interest, while not having any income themselves. This is likely to happen during the reign of the most democratically ever in the history of democratic elections, elected President Trump II, sometime in 2030 IS. Story 6. Ask this question again next year because should Trump win another term, we might see some more spicy answers. Imagine if Christofascism takes hold. That's probably what the U.S. will be known for 100 years from now. But right now, with no hypotheticals, my pick goes to school shootings. The 2A will never see any further changes or sensible gun regulations be put in place, not even in 100 years. People just love their guns, and the NRA have the money and connections to lobby for the status quo almost indefinitely. If the number one cause of kids dying isn't natural causes but guns, and that statistic doesn't change public opinion to clamor for change, not overwhelmingly at least, then yep, 100 more years of that, my 2C. Story 7, the land where the white people ruled once. Ruled may be a strong word. Replace it with led slash dominated slash flourished if it pleases you. I'm not from US. I don't wish the white people any harm. Just predicting things from an outsider's perspective based on the direction of events, circumstances. Story 8 providing a thorough example of just how badly you can screw up democracy, following in the footsteps of China and the USSR for communism, or how you can die for your country, and Germany for socialism. We build you roads and factories, then convince you to turn on your neighbors. Seriously, we need an education evolution where everyone finally begins to understand just how damned complicated the world has gotten now that our species has access to a bit of intelligence. Story 9 Atomic warfare. That's what the USA will be known for in the coming thousands and thousands of years. Whenever future archaeologists are trying to determine the source of excessive background radiation on the planet, it will always end up there. Story 10. Probably a historical beacon of hope before the advent of Jesus Stan, which launched a global nuclear holocaust in a misguided attempt to bring about an apocalypse which had been foretold in Apocrypha, not directly included in their religion anyway. The initiation of the empire of stupid. But then again, Trump might lose in November. Story 11. Failing horribly. It's obvious the rich are in charge and don't give two shits about anyone's survival but their own. But nobody seems interested in fixing it. They keep voting for the same corrupt politicians who profit off keeping the working class as poor and desperate as possible. Story 12. War, probably. I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but the U.S. has had his hands in most wars compared to other countries, for unfortunately a lot of times their own gain, and they don't seem to be changing that path. Not to say other countries aren't to blame 2BTW. There's plenty of countries that got involved when they shouldn't, including mine. Story 13. 
Well, I would say, being self-centered, climate change ignorance, and a nation who cares so much more about gun and some crazy political men who will destroy their own partisans as soon as they can than their own kids and their future life world. Such a shame with such a big and beautiful country who used to be the best to accomplish a dream life. America will fall apart if nothing is done. Story 14. Leading the way in climate denial and causing 2123 folks hardships that could have been avoided at not much cost to the U.S. spread over decades in the 20th and 21st centuries. Fat, greedy, and selfish will be the common belief about Americans of our time. Story 15. Historians will write about how quickly the U.S. lost its democracy when it re-elected a Nazi wannabe as its autocratic dictator. On day one, the dictator pardoned and released all of the dictator's supporters, adding some to his lackey cabinet. On day two, he totally eliminated the Social Security and Medicare programs. On day three, he granted all supporting billionaires a tax rate of 0% and millionaires a rate of 1%. The tax rate for all others was raised to 60% so military expenditures could be kept at high standards. On day four, NATO was dropped and Ukraine support was completely withdrawn causing Ukraine to immediately surrender to Russia. On day five, all of his previous supporters, who he called useful idiots, were jailed without charges or trials. On day six, his previous VP was hanged in front of the Capitol. Story 16. History is written by the victors, so whoever takes our place as we slowly implode will decide our written fate. But if I had to take a guess, I'd say the coming genocide at the border that our lovely leaders are gearing us towards. The climate will continue to worsen. More and more people will flee northward as the equator becomes inhabitable and potable water becomes more sparse. Our current political trajectory is so ugly to anyone who actually looks at the writing on the walls. Story 17. I'm more interested in what Europeans will whine about the USA for in 100 years. Meanwhile, they'll either be doing the same thing or directly benefiting from the USA doing whatever it is they're whining about. Story 18. The Influencer Civil War of 2027. Everything was staged to look terrible for the likes and follows, but no shots were fired at actual people. Both sides would meet at Starbucks to discuss what next weekend's battle would be. Story 19. It will be the handbook on how not to run a nation and how to intentionally collapse a large nation. There will be new books out of China about how brutal and absolute their victory was, leading Ping to write a sequel the to The Art of War, and that book will be all that is remembered of the United States. Story 20, I mean, meaning no disrespect. But if you honestly asked me what you think of first when you think of Americans where I am from, they are famous for killing their own citizens either due to racism or incompetence. So I would guess that. Story 21. Military power and global economic stability. I know some people would hate on this because of how the U.S. have intervened, interfered in other governments around the world spreading a bit of instability. But the world, over the past 80 years, has been more peaceful and prosperous than any time in human history. Story 22. Throwing it all away through respect for and adherence to a system that guarantees its users the right and ability to formally dismantle and destroy the system even to their ultimate detriment. Half of us respect the system of elections and laws and courts so hard that we stand by helpless watching the other half use those same rights and institutions to destroy those very things and all of us with stupidity and malice. Story 23. The country that decided to drop the second nuclear bomb days after witnessing the devastating deaths of the first bomb. Dropping the first in civilian city itself is a crime against humanity. Very easy to have dropped it a mile off the coast and issue a threat. Dropping the second is just, I can't accept that we actually live in such a world where a decision like this was made. Story 24. Destroying what could have been a utopia. Duping its population into being scared of foreign brown people to the point they will write a blank check to bomb them while somehow simultaneously securing extra rights domestically for brown people, tripling the cash supply in three years, and the population being too regarded to see that it was bad, while they spend the next decades slowly collapsing into a dysfunctional big government hellhole. They can't mentally unfuck themselves out of because they chose to worship a government instead of any abstract faith rooted in morals and principles. Story 25 Guessing a future Wikipedia entry will go something like, The United States of America was a country in North America that was the leading global superpower for most of the 20th century and early part of the 21st century. They had a huge impact on global politics, economy, and popular culture. The United States of America was split into excess countries after a civil war in 20X. Story 26. 
the one which you should hide oil from, just in case even if it was olive oil. I guess plus the one loves spreading democracy through bombs, it very much rarely works, but never give up plus the one which ruled the world with much green papers and much FEs, F-15, F-16, F-22, F-35, F you do that we do that, FF, you don't do that we do that, plus probably the one used to rule the world the way the English, French, Spanish, Muslims, Romans did once before, on the good side, inventions and discoveries. Story 27. We didn't invent it whole cloth, but honestly, individuality. Put another way, the desire to express your unique personality through your clothes, art you consume, and desiring own personal desires over those of your community. As hard as it may to comprehend, the current mindset that most people have of being unique individuals and not a part of a greater collective is an extremely new perspective. For most of history, you went along with your tribe, but sometime around the late 1960s early 1970s, this changed. The effects of this mindset shift are too great to try to list. If you want to listen to a much smarter man than myself explain it in greater detail, then I'd recommend watching Adam Curtis, The Century of the Self. Story 28. When the American people bowed down to government tyranny and allowed the ruling class to make all decisions without protest, and those that did were either jailed or murdered, the ruling class installed laws that allowed the president to remain in power till death or resignation, giving the president the power to appoint the next leader of the so-called free country. Story 29, I'm baffled. Honestly, beyond shocked and disappointed. The nuclear fusion breakthrough is arguably the most important discovery in human history. The fact that it was so recent and so important and nobody has mentioned it so far as I've seen is just bewildering. We'll be known for bringing free energy to the world. Among the amazing things this country has done, this one will top them all. And what we will be remembered for, for forever. Story 30 Cults. I recently learned there are over 10,000 active cults in the United States, and all of them grew heavily during the pandemic. The estimated QT of Combine's followers would be 300,000, 1 million. Odds are there are a ton of people in this country who are actively in a cult and don't even realize it. These numbers are still growing. Story 31. Same as Britain was in the 1980s. Worked hard and innovated to become a superpower. Mistook success for infallibility. Fell hard. My grocery store sells diapers for four-year-olds, not disabled, just lazy parents waiting for toilet readiness. I suspect these same parents also wait for knife and fork readiness. Teenagers get bariatric surgery. Poverty was essentially solved in the elderly, give them money with social security. But poverty in childhood is an insoluble mystery. So far we're coasting on our past successes and counting on immigrants to bail us out. U.S. has eight of the top ten universities in the world largely staffed and attended by immigrants and their kids. But sooner or later, the average American will be too dumb and sick to do any job they're willing to do. Story 32. I know this probably won't happen, and the U.S. will probably be viewed like the British Empire, but man, if it doesn't deserve the reputation of the most horrible dictatorships in power. While we at least have a democracy going, the stuff Kissinger did in Southeast Asia, fucking Christ. The man was a psychopath. Don't forget Iraq, Syria, Vietnam, and now Palestine. I hope in a hundred years the U.S. will go down as a historical bad guy because it's long overdue. The British should have got this treatment as well. Story 33. I would rather answer this for 1,000 years. 100 is pretty close in all honesty. And what we are known for is probably going to be the same as we are known today. Entertainment media powerhouses, super strong military, world police, which ultimately leads to hypocrisy in our foreign affairs. World power who fights other world powers via proxy wars. 1,000 years is more fun and probably resembles the Roman Empire. Do you remember them for their fall or for their invention of the aqueduct? Same sort of thing for the USA will happen IMO just depends on who you are asking. Story 34. We will be remembered like the end of the Prussian Empire, as people so bifurcated by influential other empires that we couldn't vote for own own preservation. I also think our current infatuation with Spartans is telling. We used to talk more about Athenians. You can see tributes to democracy and education all over schools and libraries from the 50s and 60s. But now we idolize Spartans, who enslaved neighboring communities to meet their food needs while they were hyper-focused on their military culture. Eventually, they started a civil war with Athens over who was going to have more influence over the Grecian states. Sparta prevailed after 100 years of war, but also triggered widespread famine and weakened the country as a whole, leaving it vulnerable to being absorbed into Roman Empire. Story 35. 
In a century's time, the United States might be most renowned for its pivotal role in shaping the trajectory of global governance, particularly in addressing pressing challenges such as climate change, technological advancements, and social justice. As the world's leading superpower, the USA has the potential to spearhead international cooperation and innovation on these fronts. Whether through groundbreaking policies, diplomatic initiatives, or cultural influence, the USA's actions today could define its legacy for generations to come. By prioritizing sustainability, equality, and progress, the USA can leave a lasting positive impact on the world stage in the 22nd century. Story 36 100 years from today, they will remember that a NRA endorsement was worth more than children's lives. 100 years from today, they will remember that students wanting to better themselves, become important and useful members of the society, but will be punished by placing them in debt for 40 years. 100 years from today, they will remember that there were billion-dollar church entities, unfettered by taxes, and directed people to hate those from other churches. 100 years from today, they will remember that an orange con man who raped a woman took campaign finances to fight multiple instances of violation of the law was still supported by 45% of the electorate. Story 37 it really depends on what technologies we develop and how much things like AI, cybernetics, and bioengineering change things by that time. We could all be robots by then or foraging for food in roaming gangs of starving people living in the apocalypse. My hope is that America gets remembered for helping humanity make the change to a better and more stable global civilization and helping us become a spacefaring civilization. Story 38. Predicting what the USA will be most known for in a century is speculative, but certain trajectories suggest continued influence in technology, innovation, and cultural exportation. With advancements in artificial intelligence, space exploration, and renewable energy, the USA might lead in shaping the future of these fields globally. Additionally, its diverse population and democratic values could remain central to global discourse on equality and human rights. However, unforeseen events and shifts in global dynamics could redefine its legacy. Nonetheless, the USA's impact on technology, culture, and societal norms over the past century suggests it will likely continue to shape the world in multifaceted ways. Story 39. When it gets down to it, talking trade balances here, once we've brain-drained all our technology into other countries, once things have evened out, they're making cars in Bolivia and microwave ovens in Tajikistan and selling them here. Once our edge in natural resources has been made irrelevant by giant Hong Kong ships and dirigibles that can ship North Dakota all the way to New Zealand for a nickel. Once the invisible hand has taken away all those historical inequities and smeared them out into a broad global layer of what a Pakistani brickmaker would consider to be prosperity. You know what? There's only four things we do better than anyone else. Story 40, home to the most important run of market competition the globe has ever seen. AGI is currently the central focus of the largest product companies to ever exist, and the U.S. hosts the companies and the economic system in which they function. It's currently a mad dash to AGI in the U.S., and if it's achieved, which is growing more and more likely every day, it will likely be one of, if not the most important invention our species ever makes. It will likely be the last, that, and Hollywood. Story 41. I think we'll have declined in global power relative to the rest of the world, but remain an extremely important force. Rather than being like post-empire Britain, we'll be more like the EU as a whole, important, but not in unilateral control of the globe. We'll be forced to negotiate a lot more than we currently do, but we'll still enjoy a great deal of global influence. In 100 years' time, I think a union with Canada is pretty likely, and perhaps with Mexico as well.